All right, so like an hour ago, OpenAI announced a new version of the GPT 3.5 and GPT 4 models that include the ability to call functions. So we're going to look at that today. Honestly, this has been like my favorite way of using GPT 3.5 as what we call an agent, where you not only let it respond to your requests, but you also let it execute code. And of course, it cannot directly execute code, but the way that you do it is you tell the chat model like, hey, please tell me which code to run. And then in your program as you're developing, you parse the response from chat GPT or from GPT 3.5, and then you use that to call a method. Now, it used to be kind of cumbersome and difficult. Let me show you how it used to be before. So I have this uh, agent. So this is just what I was working on and I like just literally a few days ago, <laughs> I built this. And so what I did here is, so you have the chat conversation, right? So there's a messages from you and a, from a message from the user and the messages from the assistant. And so for, to make this work, what I had to do was I had to create a agent instructions prompt. So before we had the actual conversation, I needed to give this extra information. So I needed to tell this model like, hey, uh, you should respond accurately. Sure, you have access to the following tools and there's a list of tools. And then I say, use a JSON blob to invoke a single tool and its parameters. This is how it works. You cannot do more than one at a time. Follow this response format in every response. So thought commands, JSON here, the system will respond with an observation. Then you respond again. When you no longer need to use any tools, then you say final response. So we need this whole explanation to give it to the GPT API. And then still at the end, I needed to give it, hey, please, in your next response, follow the response format because it tended to forget. So you needed all this stuff to add that to the prompt to make it respond in this structured JSON type of way. And it was pretty cumbersome. And honestly, it, it like didn't, it didn't work. Like let's say, let's say 20% of the time or 10% of the time, it just didn't work. So what OpenAI has done now is they've trained GPT 3.5 to actually give you in some cases, structured information back. Now it'll still, they say it won't be perfect. So there might still be mistakes in there, but it'll be much, much better than the whole hodgepodge that <laughs> we were doing here. So honestly, this whole file with these prompts, I can, I can just, I can delete it. There we go. It's gone. So now I need to, of course, fix my imports. This is gone. Add agent prompt. This method, this is completely gone. I don't need it anymore. What I also needed to do was to check the response on the model. Often it would say something and then they would include the JSON and then I need to split it up and then parse the JSON. So that's this whole deal, which is also gone now. Up oh, there we go. Let's uh, organize my imports. Okay, so <clears throat> how does this work? Let's let's have a look. Now I structured my thing because I had this and I want this to be extensible. So it's not going to be like the plain way to use it, but I'll show you how, how it works. So we have here this open AI language model. This is the basic way this works. We call the open AI create chat completion methods as before we have our messages. So this is exactly the same as before. I won't, I won't go into this. This is an array of messages, right? It's who sent it? What did they say? And then the new thing is, the, this one functions and this one function call. So we have to say function call auto and that will tell the API, uh, the, tell the model like, hey, you can either call a function or not. It's up to you. You can also say, I don't want to do any function calls. You can also say, I wanted to call a specific function only. So that's very useful if you're, if you're working very, with a very specific tool that you're building, like I want to check the weather and I only want to check the weather, then you can add it that way into the function call. So, okay, this functions thing, what, what, what does it, what does it look like? So it's an array, right? Of type chat completion functions. What's in here, there's a name. So you give your function a name, you optionally give it a description and then you give it parameters. Now parameters, this needs to be formatted according to JSON spec. So if you don't know JSON spec, so this is what JSON schema looks like. So you say, well, you know, this is type object, 
properties. These are my properties. They have a string and they have a description optionally. And you can have some extra stuff like this is an integer with a minimum of zero. That's kind of what it looks like. It's pretty simple. You just need to kind of know how it works. So for this example, I have created a brave search. So I internally, I call it tool. I will, I'm going to change the name now to function. So it's more aligned, but so what it looks like, basically we have a name, we have a description, right? And then we have this parameters thing. So we have type object properties, query string description is the query to search for, right? And so this is what we give here in this function. So that's just the list with this uh, brave search function in there. And that's it, right? That's it. So you give this, what it will return is, let me just, let me just run this. Let me open the, so the message I'm sending is what's the Apple Vision Pro, which of course is not part of the training data because it's very recent. And I send this, okay, 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 okay. Let's, let's, let's scroll up and see what's happening here. So this is the response from the OpenAI API. So it says we got a message with the role assistant, which is, you know, the normal messages, but now there's no content, but there is a part here that's called function call. And in my function call, we have name. So that's the name that I passed in at the beginning. And there's arguments, which is a string of a JSON. So here's where you need to be a little bit careful where OpenAI say, well, it can still hallucinate parameters. It can still give you incorrect JSON. So that's something that you will need to make sure that you catch it in your function or in your in your own code. So, but it's completely correct. So that's perfect, right? Uh, this is the same thing. So now my code says, okay, I recognize that this is a function call, the function name. I parse these arguments as JSON. And so I go to the Brave Search API. I throw in all these responses, which is just, you know, API response, voila. And then I go back to the OpenAI API and I tell it, hey, okay, let me tell you, show you how that works. We go, da, 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 da. so I have this run tool and run tool gives me a string back. So that's the whole, this stuff that you saw, right? And so this result, we will add a new message with the role of function. So we used to have only the roles of user assistance system and now we have function so we say well there's a response from the function the function name is the function name that they called and then this is the result and timestamp is something i'm just using that's not part of the, the api now one interesting thing i figured out here is that normally you give the entire conversation back to the open ai api right so because every time you're adding a new message to it, in this case, it gave me an error when I was doing it because the message that it sent before had no content. And now it's complaining, well, what you're sending doesn't have any content. So that's a bit weird. I mean, it works, but it doesn't know in its own history that what it actually decided to search. So if you look at the complete history of this conversation that we're sending to the API, it's like it it will have forgotten what the actual query was to the search. So that's a bit weird. Maybe they'll update it. Maybe this is just a bug that's here because one hour after <laughs> it's being released. So we'll see, we'll see. So yeah, th that's it, right? It's, it's actually remarkably simple. So to recap, when you are creating a call to OpenAI, you have to add this thing, function call auto, and you have to add your functions. Your functions need to be, you give it a name, you give it a description, you give it parameters. Parameters is formatted according to JSON schema. Then when you get the result, you check if the result has this property called function call, which we saw here. And if there's this function call, you check the name. Based on the name, you go look in your code, which function it is. And you go parse these arguments, which is a JSON. You just parse it and then you run your own function. And then you give it back to the AI with a role of function. You pass it the name. You need to pass it the name of the function I called. Otherwise, it'll, it'll error out. And you give actually the content of your function, which is just should be a string. 
that's it. This is like all the people who have building have been building things with Langchain. It's just so much code that's gonna be it's thrown away. So that's kind of crazy. Um, but yeah, this is cool. Thank you for watching. If there's still questions that you have, leave them here. I know I went over this quite quickly. Uh, it's it's bedtime for me, but I just wanted to <laughs> try this out and get this out to you. Um, it was a little bit difficult to get through the API documentation. I think they're just not finished yet. Uh, it's not super clear and it, there's not it's not completely right. So there's still a few mistakes in there. But yeah, there you go. You can start building and making amazing agents with a uh, ChatGPT. So like this and subscribe if you like it. Bye bye.